right, so I'm pretty sure you're aware of Princess Celestia being portrayed as a tyrant, an air natural, and God forbid, a molester. No. I'm um, canceling this Yeah, question. so I'm going to let you... <laughs> Hey readers, this is Fall Duke here for Horse News. As you uh, know, I'm Brony Scott this year again. Uh, this is the microphone, obviously. This will be better now. So I'm here with um, Jesse Noek, aka Noeking. He is, as you know, a fan VA who turned pro. He's played all sorts of wonderful roles. He started out in um, uh, playing. Um, who was it you started playing arms again? In the in the in all of my yes. roles. Uh, that's a good question. I think uh, Saris was one of my first that like got me going. Yes, Saris from uh, Housing Ultimate. Yes, from Housing Ultimate Bridge. Yes, that was the first one. And he's also been in all sorts of all sorts of other wonderful shows. He's also been in. Um, he stars as Red in uh, Fistmaster by Team Four Star, who is the professional company that he works with. We're based in Edison in Texas, which is where HarmonyCon is based. Do you go there at all? Oh yeah, um, I've been confirmed for HarmonyCon this year. Actually. Yes. Yeah. Maybe you could drop in the head office and see how everyone is. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking that. Yeah. yeah. yeah might as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so ob obviously um, we talked in the panel that you that was on a while ago, which was part of this video. Um, there was, you know, you've discussed, re discussed uh, your main inspirations and things like that. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about your main inspirations and influences? Like, yeah, when writing characters, do you have any uh, influences from, say, uh, from, from other media? Like other characters you were inspired by? Other authors even, you know, because inspiration comes from so many places. Nope. Just who? Oh. That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I'm like I'm really inspired by like my friends. You know, like Team Four Star and, 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 and uh, just just friends that I've made in the industry that like they make cool stuff and that inspires me to want to make cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's it's for YouTube videos. It's interesting because like I don't really watch other YouTubers, so I kind of am just making. YouTube videos without that context and trying to like develop my own style and stuff so it's interesting because like some people make YouTube videos based on like what YouTube videos are like yeah. but for me I'm just kind of just flying by the seat of my pants and just seeing what kind of happens and yeah. that's a unique kind of uh, perspective to view media from. Yes. <laughs> okay so um, when it comes to voice acting what would you say your biggest challenges apart from obviously transitioning which we discussed in a lot of detail. And it's very important if you're a trans actor, if you're you know if you're transgender or transsexual, then this is obviously uh, useful for you. Um, but what are your other what, what was your other biggest challenge? Do you suppose? Um, well, that's like at the forefront of my mind right now because uh, right now I'm going through the process of, of my wish changing. But um, I guess the other is just. Uh, there's a challenge in, uh, I talked a bit about it on the panel, but just like going from one side of the voiceover industry and knowing everything about that and then just going to the other side has been like a huge, like super cool challenge yeah. uh, where now instead of, it's like, it's like, I've heard male voice actors my whole life uh, in cartoons and stuff, but now having to focus on that and being like, okay, now you're playing these roles is, is it's been like... Uh, definitely a challenge, but like very fun I, and something that I didn't know that I would have to do in my life. Uh, but I've never been happier in my career and in my personal life. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. Did you get any? Uh, did you encounter any friction at all when you uh, when you came out as transgender? Um. No, I think luckily, like most of, uh, I'm very fortunate in that most of the people that uh, I work with were like super chill about it and were yeah. like very supportive. Uh, yeah. You know. Um. Uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm fortunate. I, I'm not. Family isn't a huge thing to me, but uh, my family is supportive of me, and I know yeah. that that's like privileged of me to say because like a lot of you know trans people would probably like kill to like just be accepted you know by their family, uh, and I try to keep that in mind. But uh, yeah, my mom is like my biggest fan, and she's that's awesome. Yeah, she's awesome. been fantastic. Yeah. Uh, for my birthday this year, uh, she works in fashion stuff, and I, like, before transitioning even, I was, like, obsessed with, like, suits and stuff, and uh, she works in fashion, and for my birthday, she got me uh, my first, like, official suit, and it felt, like, really good, and the fit is great, and I'm like, cool. you know, I, cool. that's, that's been great. Um, when you, now that you're a professional voice actor, are there any restrictions on what you can do as a fan VA or anything like that? Um, as long as I'm not, like, 
in the show and doing a parody thing. It, it also just yes. depends on the company. You know, some companies yes. are a lot stricter about that. Uh, but thinking about things right now, I don't think there's any real restrictions right now. So there's no say. Oh, now you're working work for us. You can't uh, do uh, you can't do pony stuff, pony fan stuff anymore. There's nothing like that. Right? Yeah. Like if I was in the actual show, they might have something to say about that. Oh yeah. But yeah. Uh, I'm not, so I can just <clears throat> do whatever I want with the fan stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Do you have any upcoming projects coming out, for um, fan wise? Let me think. Fan wise, I'm not sure. Um, I know that uh, Stefan Krosix has been working on the next episode of, of Fistmaster, and yeah. he sends me uh, updates about that, and it's like so cool because like he got a major like uh, equipment upgrade since episode mm. one, and cool. now he's been working on two, and it looks like so good. Like he's able to do way more with it, and it looks much cleaner, and I'm like super excited about that. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So, do you want to tell us a little bit more about uh, about uh, Fistmaster for those of us who don't know? Sure. Uh, Fistmaster is an or- yeah, it's okay. Uh, Fistmaster is an original animated series uh, that's being produced by Team Four Star, and it was created by uh, I. Th- I- uh, some people you know by your re- their real name, some by the the screen name. Uh, Stefan, I just call Stefan, so I forget what his actual screen name is. I think it's Krosix, uh, which is, like, his last name. But, uh, yeah, so he was making the series before, and then Team Four Star took it on, and so now he's completely, like... It had two or three episodes, I think, before, and now he's completely rebooted it, and it's about, uh, you know, martial arts, and uh, the two main characters are Akio and Red, and Red is uh, a character that I started voicing before my transition, and um, yeah, uh, Red is uh, canonically gay in the series, and that's, like, super cool. She's one of my favorite characters to voice in anything ever, probably, because uh, Stefan knows me so well that he's able to, like, put oh. elements of myself yep. in the character yep. to, like, uh, you know, uh, play off of that. And uh, did, um, yeah. did, did her voice change at all in the show? Um, well, the I, I recorded for episode two, uh, which is the one that's currently in production, uh, before I started T, and I had some pickup lines to do, which is just little things that, like, you know, added or, oh, we need to change something. Uh, so I recorded that afterwards, and uh, the the difference is a little noticeable, but we were like, we just have to power through these little lines, because the next episode, it'll be consistent. Red will just sound whatever I can make her. Yeah, the most yeah. feminine that I can make her, you know. But for this, it'll be more noticeable just because... If there's one scene where she sounds a certain way, and the next scene it's different, and then the next scene it's back to the first one, it's more noticeable. Yeah, yeah. So I tried my best, and I think uh, we put, like, a voice filter on it or something to, like, help it along the way. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah, I, I think the next episode it'll be a lot easier. Okay, so final thing very quickly. Uh, do you have anything to say for Horse News? Any advice to give to our viewers about uh, voice acting, doing fan stuff? Um, do what you're passionate about. Uh, don't try to fit characters that you don't want to voice. I know that sounds weird, but sometimes, like, at least me, I, I tried to, like, fit voices that I thought people wanted, but it wasn't, like, it didn't feel authentic. Uh, yes. So just focus on stuff that you want to do. Yeah. Okay. And uh, one last thing. Um, who would win in a fight between Dr. Zayas and King Louis from uh, The Jungle Book? Ooh. You know what? I don't think I've seen The Jungle Book in, like, a million years. I can't... I cannot recall who those characters are. <laughs> what, is one a tiger? No, no, no. He's an orangutan. They're both orangutans. Oh, they both are then. Uh, Hence the question. It's scientific, you see. Well, whatever one sings the best, I feel, has yeah. the more power. Yes. <laughs> yes. And just for the record, uh, Dr. Zayas, if you're watching this, that doesn't include having a bunch of backup singers singing a song that's just your name to the tune of Rock Man Deus, okay? That doesn't count. No. Uh, if you know what I'm referencing, then you watched The Simpsons from the very start. Uh, you have excellent taste. Uh, okay, so one last thing very quickly. Um, favorite pony? Uh, uh, least favorite pony? Ooh. Uh, that's tough. I don't know. I don't okay. hate any of them. Okay, favorite episode? Uh, I'm still a sucker for, like, season one stuff. Okay. Uh, funniest thing you've seen in the fandom? Just that there could be a Hooves Line panel, I yes. guess. It's crazy that we live in a, in a, in a 
we exist in a fandom where we can just do like a funny improv show about horses. I think that's yes, great. That's, that's <laughs> um, cringiest thing you've seen in the fandom? Uh, the the there was someone who asked. Um, Nicole Oliver about molestia. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, I thought that was parody until like a month ago, and they were like, "Oh, that actually happened." And I'm like, "This is why everyone hates us." <laughs> All right, so I'm pretty sure you're aware of Princess Celestia being portrayed as a tyrant, an irrational, and God forbid, a molester. And, and Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy on occasion. No. I'm uh, Yeah. Special. So I'm gonna let you know from where All I right. stand. The darker side of the fandom yeah. is not part of uh, what I will talk about. It's not part of what the show's about. If you choose to do that, that's your choice. It's not why we're here. Not why I'm here anyway. Okay. And very <laughs> last. Oh God. Yeah. That. Um, very last final thing. Um, are you gonna stay around for G5? You know, I haven't even caught up G4, uh, but if if I hear that it's good, I'll give it a shot. Okay, I mean, do you, are you aware of any of the leaks at all? Uh, uh, no. All I'm going to say is, um, the two things that I can confirm through other sources are, um, it's going to be uh, voiced by, the uh, animation work is going to be by Boulder in Ireland. So yeah, if you're in uh, Ireland or the UK, they're still looking for people to, uh, you know, fill roles, which is great. So you can get over there quickly, oh, assuming yeah. they work out the border agreement thing in time. <laughs> and f I love how just everyone on the planet knows about this now. You know, yeah. that's the one thing people in the, the states know about the UK is just that now. <laughs> that's just just that. Yeah. <laughs> Six months ago, that wasn't even a thing. And lastly, um, so yeah, Boulder during animation, and uh, Megan McCarthy is going to be on the writing team for that. Oh, cool. cool. Um, does does that fill you with any hope or dread or or, or what? Does it what? Does that fill you with any positive <laughs> expectations or negative expectations or what? Uh, you know, there's there's been a lot of people that, like, I put my trust in and then the product comes out and it's garbage. But, on the other hand, there's also new people that I have not heard anything from and then the product is great. So we'll see. You know? Okay, so we're going to wrap it up now. Thank you. This is Photo Force News. Keep on cringing, people. Uh, we hope you have a good time. Check it. A click hole in a donut shape. Clipping on them con badges so we know what plays and keep a press pass. Favorite pretty pony, probably press pass. Lower in the trill, be on his eyes. How'd you guess that? Horse news, horse news, motherfucking horse news. Horse news, horse news, motherfucking horse news. In a game that's got as much manure to rifle through, you'd be smart to go to find a newer news cycle, too. Horse news, horse news, motherfucking horse news. Horse news, horse news, motherfucking horse news. Today I'm posting up the song acting.